Greetings and welcome back carnivores to Carnivore Confidential, a uh, place where we speak about meat, talk about everything meat related. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please uh, consider liking and subscribing uh, to um, see future episodes every Thursday at 6 o'clock. Anyway, today what we're talking about is steak. Um, a number of do's and don'ts as far as steaks are concerned. Um, first and foremost, I want you to remember one thing. Forget the chill before you grill. You should always grill your steak at room temperature. This is because uh, the internal temperature takes a while for it to, if it's, if it's refrigerated, the internal temperature takes a while for it to, to warm up to the, the same level as the outside temperature uh, being grilled or, or um, being seared or, or being um, uh, reverse seared or even sous vide for that matter. Not Although sous vide is not that much of an issue considering sous vide takes quite a long time. But anyway, forget the chill before you grill. Always grill at room temperature. Number two, dry brining. Salt plays an enormous role in the overall uh, flavor of the end product. And when I say dry brining, if you're not familiar with that, it just simply means adding salt to the dry surface of the, or to the dry surface of a steak. At room temperature, you should salt liberally um, at least two hours, 40 minutes to two hours before you cook. And um, uh, this draws moisture out of the steak and uh, in turn draws the salt back into the steak to tenderize it. Um, so remember, forget the chill before you grill, dry brining, salting before, before you, uh, you cook. And the next thing on the list that I want to talk to you about is um, the, the term bloody. Now, the term bloody is kind of a bit of a misnomer because there's no blood actually involved. It's actually... The juices that come out of a steak, of a rare steak or a medium rare steak, the juices that, it, that you find present is actually called myoglobin. And myoglobin is, an, is, a, is a protein that's assist, used in uh, assisting to uh, uh, deliver oxygen to the muscles of the animal. Um, so the longer you cook a steak, the darker the myoglobin becomes. Now, eating a steak rare is sometimes considered not a good idea, although uh, you're relatively safe um, because the the exterior any uh, bacteria that may be present on the exterior of the steak is, is cooked off or killed off during the cooking process. Now you would never consider eating poultry raw uh, or or, uh, or or anything like that, but eating red meat is uh, is okay. And even eating pork slightly pink is now considered not now considered, but it's been considered safe for a long time. Trichinosis has been bred out of the animals. Uh, and is no longer an issue uh, as far as uh, eating po uh, pork um, pink, slightly pink. I'm not talking about rare, but pink. Now, that, of course, doesn't refer to or doesn't apply to ground beef of any sort, uh, simply because the process of grinding simply mixes the uh, any interior or sorry, any exterior bacteria that may be present. Um, it simply mixes it into the interior of it. And if it's not cooked to a medium rare to a rare sorry, if it's not cooked well done, then you could potentially run into foodborne problems. The next thing I want to touch on is the, the type of steak or the quality, the, um, the cut of steak that you use. Uh, filet being, of course, everybody's go-to as far as tenderness is concerned. It's not necessarily my favorite, just simply because there's almost zero fat on it or in it. And uh, my go-to steak, as far as flavor is concerned, is a, is a ribeye, always will be, always has been. Remember, fat equals flavor, and there's a reason why the steak uh, that you order at a restaurant, if it's a filet mignon, uh, arrives at your table, either wrapped in bacon or smothered in some sort of sauce, um, is because the, there, is no flat, there is no fat to give it flavor. Now, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about, I already spoke to you about in a previous video, uh, reverse searing or sous, or sous vide cooking which, um, as you already know, brings the internal temperature of the meat up to and almost almost to the point where you, where you want to serve it. In my case, of medium rare, in my case, is about 130 degrees internal. Um, so you want to bring your meat up to about 125 degrees and then hit it, hit it with a searing, like a crazy hot searing um, cast iron pan to give that outside crust uh, that everybody's desiring. And... I think finally the thing I want to talk to you about is um, 
I know a lot of people consider steak sauce to be the devil's the the, the devil, um, but playing the devil's advocate, um, as long as it doesn't mask the the flavor of the meat, as long as it, it contributes to the flavor of the meat, I say, hey, go ahead, slather it in your favorite sauce. But one thing that I think you should consider is a chimichurri as opposed to a steak sauce. A chimichurri, you can look up a recipe for a chimichurri anywhere on the internet, and uh, it's basically just a parsley and um, other greens and herbs that are chopped together, held together with uh, garlic and, and uh, olive oil, and served with your steak. And uh, it is the, the pièce de résistance. It's the, just the over the top as far as adding flavor to your steaks concerned without ha without masking it with any heavy sweet sauces or anything like that. Anyway, that's it folks for uh, today. I've got uh, something else for you coming down the pipe for next Thursday. But uh, for now, please like, share and subscribe uh, as I know you probably will. And uh, enjoy the steak that you're about to have for dinner tonight and I'll see you on the rebound. Carnivore Confidential out. Thanks for uh, watching and stay hungry folks. <laughs>